Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, looking at the crowd, I can see uh, uh, prof very senior engineers, uh, professionals, policy makers, and a couple of uh, faculty members of my own university, which is a bit tense at this moment. Uh, I would just, uh, after a very informative uh, presentation, uh, just give me a few minutes uh, to explain and uh, turn your attention uh, to a very uh, to an emerging uh, technology which is an absolute game changer. The topic is energy storage. This is the simplest form of energy storage that we know, the simple wind-up car. Uh, it has a mechanism to store energy and it dissipates while doing some work. With age, toys change, now it's the phone. From the car, toy car to the phone, there was a fundamental difference in the method of storing energy, which is that it changed from mechanical energy to chemical energy. Energy storage is the most researched engineering field. If you look at venture capital, just in this year, first quarter, it's 110 million, 220 million second quarter. So it's big. Why is the world spending this much on just advancing batteries when we can spend all that to make the hoverboard? Because hoverboards were uh, promised to us in year 2000, but still it's not there. It's because, it's just because of the vast span that energy storage covers. And uh, we'll, we'll see that in the next slide. And uh, for those who are young at heart and young, who are just wondering what's what happened to the hoverboard, I have, a, I have good news. The prot we have a working prototype. Just thank to, again, uh, thanks to energy storage. So why the buzz? Vast span of applications, from mobile phones to satellites, computers, telecommunications to defense. The advancement of this technology will permit projects that were not feasible five years back. So this is the next game changer. We are expecting a boom in technology just from this one, one sector. And now it has become uh, economical, from luxury to economical. The fact that it can be accommodated in an industrial scale. And uh, in the say, sense of what we are dealing with, it gives access to, a, to the free energy sources. We have been looking at a lot of development plans, and all development, plan, all development plans require energy. So where could we get it? <coughs> Sri Lanka is blessed with solar and with wind. With storage, we are permitted to use those resources. So how do you use them? Basically, storage can be used in these four forms, off-grid systems, backup systems, and grid interactive systems. Just to go over them very quickly, off-grid systems just allows you to live off the energy of wind and solar. Backup systems is just is to uh, ensure that there's a concern, constant supply of energy. Grid interactive systems are a combination of the two above and the grid tie systems, which means, if you can see the diagram, it can get energy from the solar panels, from the grid, and then if the load requires it, use it directly or store it on the batteries and use it later. So what's the opportunity? Renewable energy, like everything in nature, is variable. That's not very good when it comes to a constant supply. When you, when storage is introduced into the system, it can accommodate the variation, thus making the capacity of renewable plants larger. So investment in renewable IPPs, independent uh, power plants, that be, which means there's very much, there's large investment opportunities in this sector where 
the scale of renewable energy plants will be bigger, so then it will be more economical. Then, for the SME sector and for all other industries, we know there is a peak. There is a peak charge and off-peak charge. A huge challenge when introducing uh, solar uh, to the industry is that we can only take out the day energy consumed during the day. So the return ROI is larger in these uh, in these uh, categories of I2 and I3. What we can what storage can accommodate for, uh, for this is we can store energy during the peak, during the off peak, and use it during the peak. So if we can, uh, in, the, the, in the table, for I2 and I3, there's a huge difference between the peak and the off peak. That can be, uh, that can be utilized as an economic advantage. Then there's microgrid concept. It is not uh, alien to Sri Lanka. Even now, right now, there's a working microgrid in elevative, Jaffna, which means a set of houses which, produ which produce uh, electricity from solar and wind can be collaborated into a cluster. And in that cluster, that cluster would have a shared storage. So if one house is not using, the other one can share. This uh, concept is, uh, has been validated and, uh, and right at the moment has been commissioned and, and running for about two, three, two months. Where can we go with uh, any storage and J Lanka technologies? We commit, uh, we uh, serve at two levels: the utility level and the consumer level. For in the in the scale of utility uh, of renewable energy, we we can provide storage for independent power power producers. In consumer level, it could be houses, uh, domestic scale, commercial scale for hotels resource so they can move further out, resource can, be, uh, can move further out of cities and into, into the natural habitat. And uh, telecommunication, which is basically telecommunication towers, which, have be, which is more economical to run on off-grid. Then on the industrial scale, you can get their benefit uh, from the tariff, uh, time of use tariff. It is a very safe and profitable investment, and uh, the technology is advancing at a pace that the commercial viability of projects will become better with time, and the pace, it, it changes at a very rapid play, uh, pace. So uh, just wanted to uh, give an enter, uh, very brief introduction into this game change in technology. And uh, we would be very happy uh, to assist you and your industry on this uh, on energy storage. Thank you.